We are back to answer more health and wellness questions. Joining me are Dr. Kate Speak from Benaroya Research Institute at Virginia Mason and Karen Bennell, Collaborative Divorce Coach. Welcome back. These are Thank two you. different subjects. So <laughs> Thank let's start you. with autoimmune. We talked about uh, you're looking for healthy people to take part in this clinical trial dealing with autoimmune. And there are two different age groups, the 25 to 35, you said, and 55 to 65. So why? Why the two yeah, groups? Yeah, that's right. So this study is really focusing on trying to understand the healthy immune system. Because without that sort of baseline, it's really difficult to understand what's going on in the Got context it. of disease. One thing we already know is that our immune systems change quite a bit as we grow older. And so we want to make sure that we can more fully understand that question and also take it into account as we're asking questions about disease. Okay, that makes sense. Are there any known links? You mentioned some hereditary links with some autoimmune diseases. Are there any other links that we know about, for example, the environment, food, something other than that? Yeah, that's a great question. So it's something that we're definitely going to be investigating in this study. Um, the ways that we're going to look at it are by asking questions about diet once a year, this very detailed questionnaire yeah. about everything you've eaten, and um, also asking some questions about things like pollen and exposure to smoke, like we all were exposed mm -hmm. a couple of summers ago. We'll now be in a position to understand uh, what that might do to the immune system directly. And, and the reason that's important is, as you were saying, there are some known links, right? So rheumatoid arthritis in particular um, is strongly linked to smoking. And so we know that there are things in the environment and things that we do that may change our immune systems. Right. And it's important to look at that deeply. And pin that down. Yeah. Um, so there is some good news. You mentioned a, a couple of the things that are advances and, and we're hoping for more. Uh, where else are we seeing progress? Yeah, so I talked earlier about type 1 diabetes, but um, we've also had some pretty big breakthroughs in the last few years in peanut allergy. So many people who are parents of young children will know that the recommendations uh, of when you should start giving your children peanut have changed mm -hmm. in the last few years. And the reason for that is a study that was driven by the immune tolerance network that's housed at BRI um, that showed that if you give peanut earlier, you can actually prevent peanut allergy in wow. those who are most likely to get it. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. And so foods can be a factor in helping or hurting our immune system? Foods can be a factor, especially in food allergy, as you can imagine, right? And we all know that gluten is important in celiac. Beyond that, I think the links are, are really still being studied. Okay, so more to come, more but to you're come. there doing the work. <laughs> <laughs> and so Karen, let's talk about um, life after divorce, and we're basically talking about the first couple of years, the, the, the right. big adjustment that right. families make and the holidays. So for, for people's allies, for their friends, their family who may um, be watching this all unfold, how can we be helpful and, and I, I don't know how to ask this and not make it sound negative, but maybe what not to say or do? Right. The, the what not to say or do is to sort of imply that you can just cheer someone out of the grief of restructuring a family, because you can't. And so one of the things you really can do is to lean in and say, hey, this is all new, it's tough, I know it, you're restructuring your family, how can I help? What are some of the things I could do or we could do as our family to support yours, to support you, your co-parent, your children? Would you like me to take the kids for a few hours for you if things get a little tough? Any of those loving, nurturing kinds of offerings are going to be much more helpful and better received than, oh, come on, it's the holidays. Yeah. <laughs> Let's just celebrate. And your uh, poor person, your poor parent going through their first and restructure. They feel like home. they have to perform they happiness have to perform, for you. And they're not <clears throat> feeling it, and they're just so stressed out. Yeah. So and it just takes time. It takes, it takes time. time. This is still something that people have to n navigate when you're a child of divorce, when you're an adult. Absolutely. Or when you're getting divorced and you have adult children. So let's talk about that. You bet. You know, interestingly enough, one of the fastest growing areas for divorcing parents is our gray couplers, which is yeah. our 50 to 70 year old crowd. And so Tell me many, why. Tell me why. Well, I think there's a million reasons for it. We're all living longer, mm -hmm. so we're expecting more out of life for a longer period of time. Uh, it's just the pace at which our whole culture moves. I think there are a thousand reasons. But most importantly is it results in adult children losing what they expected out of grandparents, Lose, you know, losing what they expected right. it was going to look like as they went into their own family life with their parents. And boy, is that complicated. So suddenly, it's, it's, it's the holidays, and mom has a new partner boyfriend, dad has a new partner right. girlfriend, <laughs> and I'm like, oh dear, I don't even know if I like Madeline. 
And I certainly am not sure about Bud at all. So what do you do? What's the proper way to approach this? Because life goes on and your parents, even if they're, you know, you had expectations, are entitled to their lives. They are so totally to entitled to their lives. And so again, the shorter, sweeter, more uh, bookended kinds of interactions that mm -hmm. we have where we know we can be honest, we know we can be at ease, we're gonna structure those. We're gonna need to remind, so I want the parents to be listening to this part. Your kids still need you to just be their parents. Yeah. They've had 25, 35, 45 years of traditions with you at the holiday and to suddenly decide that you're gonna unilaterally tear those up and put them in the trash isn't gonna sit well with your adult kids or your grandchildren. So remember, they still need that team that they've known since they were babies that they expected for their own children with their grandparents. Those are some of the things we wanna keep in mind. Yes, your new partner's important. We want them to feel included, but let's not force feed a new relationship on an already in, you know, in motion family that's been in motion for many, yeah. many years. Maybe just a baby steps baby till steps. you get there. You, baby know, steps. you know what we say? The slower you go, the faster we'll get there. Oh. I love that so much, and that's so true. I it's mean, so true. You might have changed on a dime, seemingly, but not right. everybody else is going to be not able to do that at the same time. Not everyone fell in love right. the way you did. Right. Not everybody <laughs> moved to Florida at the same time. Whatever. <laughs> right. Okay. So let's talk about step families really quickly. Same general principles. Same general principles. That's just it. The slower we go, the faster we'll get there. It's counterintuitive when we try to force relationships on folks. If they're over much over the age of two, we're going to get pushback. <laughs> and you know, it, it just always surprises parents, doesn't it? It's like, but I'm so happy. Aren't you happy for me? It's like that's not on the table. Of course, I'm happy. For for you. I just don't know this person. Right. And it's my Thanksgiving. It's my Hanukkah. It's my Christmas. Right. So we're again, we're looking at how do relationships build? How do we slow down? How do we know that if I force my children to be with my new romantic partner, there's going to be a kickback with my co-parent. Like my kids are going to go, if I hang out with you and I like you, will I hurt my mom? That's called a loyalty bind. Yeah. And it's natural and normal and healthy. We want to prevent kids from being dropped right into the middle of a loyalty bind. That's such a good point. There's so much we can do and learn. Thank you very much. Right. You've both been so helpful to us today. Um, coming up next, if you use over-the-counter pain relievers, there's a side effect that you definitely want to watch out for. We're going to tell you what that is and how to deal with it after this break.